Dustmall has finally arrived and now you can get your hands on those beloved little bits of cardboard. But which one should you pick up first? Well, here's a little list to help you decide. Let's do this. Starting off with the uncommons, we are going to do Ethereal Armor. Was it Ethereal Armor? I'm not quite sure. One white mana, enchantment aura, enchant creature, enchanted creature gets plus one plus one for each enchantment you control and has first strike. This is absolutely fantastic. If you're a type of deck that's running all the glitters and you're relying on combat damage and you're in an enchantment deck, this is a fantastic auto include. It's just going to make your creature absolutely massive. First strike is not to be sniffed at. You can do lots of combat shenanigans these days. Ethel armor, enchantment aura deck. Definitely give this one a look in. Untimely malfunction. This is just like goes to show why mod modal cards are so good. One in a red for an instant. Choose one. Destroy target artifact. Change the target of a target spell or ability with a single target. One or two target creatures can't block this turn. This is protection, it's removal, it's unblockable, doing all the things you need to do in red to help progress your game plan and move forward. This is what makes modal cards so strong. This is an absolute fantastic include in any red deck. Next up is Withering Torment. Withering Torment is two and a black for an instant. And it says, destroy target creature or enchantment, you lose two life. Three mana, you're gonna lose two life, but you can now destroy specifically enchantments in black. This is fantastic. Like, we can get upset about the fact that black can now deal with enchantments in some way, or we can just embrace it because the card is already printed. Following on from this one, here is another black card, or black and green, I should say, and that's Drag to the Roots. So two black and a green for an instant. It has Delirium. The spell will cost two less to cast as long as there are four or more card types among cards in your graveyard. Yeah, and then it says destroy target non-land permanent. If you're in a graveyard deck, self-mill deck, anything like that, this is essentially going to read black, green, destroy target non-land permanent. And to me, that's absolutely fantastic, as long as you're in those graveyard self-mill types of strategies. Next up, we're looking at the rares, and I have got to mention the land cycles here. Your land base and your mana base are the most important things in any type of mana deck. Without them, you can't cast your spells. So yeah. The whole new Verge land cycle is absolutely fantastic. They are like check lands. If you're running the check lands, consider upgrading them to the Verge cycle. Next land that needs to be mentioned is Balgavoth's Lair. We now have another enchantment land. I say another because we've got Urza's Saga, which was an enchantment saga land. Once again, it goes into any type of enchantment deck. It's just an extra land. Yeah, it does enter tapped, which is a bit of a downside, but it's going to trigger all your enchantresses and do all of those shenanigans. So yeah, that's absolutely fantastic. Just be careful if you're playing Opalescence and you turn all your enchantments into creatures because this has a CMC of zero, so it will die. Next up, we have Demonic Council. Demonic Council is an absolutely fantastic card. So it's one on black for a sorcery. And it says, search your library for a demon card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Absolutely fantastic include in any like mono black Rakdos demon type decks. And there's plenty of demons in this set if you're playing any of those. Then it also gets better because it says Delirium, and then if you have Delirium, you may search your library for any card, put it into your hand, then shuffle. So your Demonic Council becomes a Demonic Tutor if you have Delirium. So once again, self mill strategies, graveyard strategies, all that type of stuff, you are going to benefit from playing this card. Absolutely fantastic, and you are probably playing a Demon or two in one of those decks anyway. So this is probably going to be a fantastic include for those types of decks. Following on from Demonic Council, we have Shredder. So two green green for an artifact vehicle. It's a 5-5 once it's been grouped. And it says when Hedge Shredder attacks, you mill two cards. So enabling self-mill graveyard type strategies is what this is going to do. And then it says whenever one or more lands are put into your graveyard from your library, put them on the battlefield to tap. So you mill two lands straight onto the battlefield tap. This is crew one as well. You're playing a bunch of like mana dorks and anything like that because you're in a heavy type ramp deck. As soon as that land of war elf or the one one token that you've got is no longer of any use, you can tap crew this. It's not only swinging for five damage, but on attack you mill two, potentially put a land into play, helping your ramp. If not, you're just enabling your strategy. So head shredder, once again, graveyard self mill decks, as I keep saying, solid include. Next is Comeback Wrong. Comeback Wrong is two and a black for a sorcery. Destroy target creature. If a creature card is put into a graveyard this way, return it to the battlefield under your control. Sacrifice it at the beginning of your next end step. Absolutely fantastic. Destroy your opponent's big threat. Get it back onto your side of the board and then do whatever you want with it. Probably going to sacrifice it to your Ultra of Dementia, Ashnod's Altar, anything like that to generate you some value before it disappears at the end of the turn. Or if it has a fantastic ETB trigger, maybe you're just stealing it to get the ETB, especially in like the late game in Commander. 
This could actually be a fantastic little steal. Next up we have Marvin the Murderous Mimic. This is a two mana legendary artifact creature. It's a toy as well by the way. Um, it says Marvin has all activated abilities of creatures you control that don't have the same name as this creature. It's absolutely fantastic if you are running a bunch of creatures that have activated abilities that you like in your deck. This is just another version of that. Never mind the combo potential that this thing creates. Next up is Split Up for one white white. We have a Sorcery Speed board wipe. Choose one, destroy all tapped creatures or destroy all untapped creatures. Now in the right deck, this is an absolute slam dunk. If you're convoking or attacking, being really aggressive and have lots of tapped creatures, this can also become a one-sided board wipe. Yes, you might not hit everything on the battlefield, but for three mana to clear 90% of the stuff, I think that's absolutely fantastic. On to the big splashy mythics, and I'm starting off with Tyvar the Pummelet. So one green and green for a legendary creature elf warrior, and there are three three. It says tap another untapped creature you control, Tyvar the Pummelet gains indestructible turn of turn and tap it. Yep, fine, whatever. Next is three green green creatures you control get plus X plus X until end of turn where X is the greatest power among the creatures you control. This is a absolutely fantastic pump spell in any big stumpy green deck because you know if only there was an elf that got bigger every time you played more elves. Yeah, I'll be throwing this into my Voya deck should I pull it at the pre-release next week. So yeah, I think this is an absolutely fantastic card. It just does what green wants it to do. It's going to make your stuff bigger, have an impact and then when people try and remove it, you can make it indestructible. Following on from that, we've got Screaming Nemesis. Screaming Nemesis is two and a red for a creature spirit that's a 3-3 with haste. And then it says, whenever Screaming Nemesis is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to any other target. If a player is dealt damage this way, they can't gain life for the rest of the game. Do not sleep on that effect, yeah? You can't gain life is massive. Even if you're not in a life gain deck, you might incidentally gain a little bit through uh, equipment that you have or maybe a couple of lands that you play or through other various effects gaining just a little bit of life in a game of commander could be the difference between winning and losing last but definitely not least is the meat hook massacre 2 yeah this is probably on everybody's top list yeah absolutely fantastic it is four black pips so you're going to need to be heavily in black to be playing this card that says when meat hook massacre 2 enters each player sacrifices x creatures Whenever a creature you control dies, you may pay three life. If you do, return that card under your control with a finality count on it. Whenever a creature an opponent control dies, they may pay three life. If they don't, return that card under your control with a finality count on it. Destroy their best thing, goes to die, they don't pay three life, you get to keep that best thing. Yeah, sure, it has a finality count on it, but that just means it's exiled and they can't get it back. Meat Hook Massacre, I think, is definitely going to do some work in some mono black decks, especially if you're playing like a lot of edict effects. You know, your board wipe heavy, that type of stuff. You have a lot of targeted removal and you want to pick off your opponent's creatures. I have two honorable mentions. First off is the Enduring Cycle. Now, the Enduring Cycle are all enchantment creatures that come into the battlefield and then when they die, they come back on their enchantment side. We all know enchantments are hard to deal with, so this just gives you a redundancy in that type of effect. And as you look at the Enduring Cycle, a lot of those effects are what you want to be doing in those colors anyway, so I think they are an absolute fantastic include. Following off on that is Rooms. If you see a room card that synergizes with your deck, consider running it. It's kind of like having a modal spell. You're going to cast it for one bit, but then you still have access to the second bit later on in the game, which is absolutely fantastic. So it can help enable further strategies further down the line. So it's kind of giving you an extra card in hand, but actually it's already on the battlefield. So yeah, I think some of these rooms uh, are going to be very nice in the specific decks that they, um, they want to be in. So yeah, keep your eyes open for the rooms and definitely consider the endurance cycle. And there we have it, that is my take on the best cards that you should consider picking up for your commander deck. I was very low on the small when it was first announced, I'm not going to lie, I had my reservations, but I am pleasantly surprised, so congratulations Wizards, you have won me over, fantastic set. I will definitely be picking up some singles from this, and I suggest that you guys do the same. So um, thank you guys for watching, if you made it this far in the video, please consider hitting that subscribe button, like button, dropping me a comment, if there's any like auto includes for decks that I've not mentioned, throw them down in the comments, share so everybody else knows, and that's it. I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye for now.